Hey y'all, Jim Panky here. I want to do something a little different today. I wanted to walk you through what I do when I get a brand new banjo in a box. This one's from Music Link. It's a recording game. Uh, it's, I've, I've not opened this box, so I'm going to walk you through the process of opening all of this up and showing you what I do when I get a new instrument in and how I how I make sure everything's working okay, what I do to it, you know, set the bridge, check all, ch just check it out and make sure it's going to play okay. So let's, let's just jump right into that. Now you got to open your box. Anything I do, I use a knife. You know, when you're opening packages, just be sure that you're not cutting anywhere that's you know, likely to damage your instrument. Fortunately, on, on a box like this, everything is, you know, down in the box. So that works pretty good. Uh, get rid of all of the packing material, however this comes. Uh, different, different shippers will pack a little differently. Uh, these are always packed pretty nicely. Uh, I, I wasn't really sure what kind of case I was getting with this one. This one appears to be a, uh, uh -oh. let's see if I can do this. It's a, it's a soft side foam type case. You probably couldn't hear me. It's a soft side foam type case. And see, it's all in plastic. And a lot of, when you get something, there'll be, Plenty of packaging. So let's just tear into that with a handy dandy knife. I won't be won't be using this plastic again. Uh, and so so there we've begun our unboxing. So let's do this. I'm gonna I'm gonna plop down here in the floor with it. And, and open this up and show and just show you kind of what to expect when you open this up because I know a lot of you when you, when you when you buy your instruments you you might just be a little surprised it's like oh no what do I do so let's open this up all righty well we're down here in my floor <laughs> this is kind of real life uh, you know everybody that's got a banjo that necessarily have a workbench area or anything so a lot of times you know you're just in the floor or you're on the couch or the kitchen table so this is how it goes this is how it works for me i i don't have a fancy workshop or anything like that but we're gonna open this up and and see see what's what's in here i don't know <laughs> aha and unzip that all the way. There we go. Now, as you see, this banjo is wrapped up in the case here. So let, let's let's deal with this. Uh, there's more packing material that we can lose. Cross all of that out. Uh, silica gel package. This, Throw away, do not eat, but I'm going to save that and put it on my fries later. Uh, strap for the case. Another strap for the case. It's kind of like a backpack deal. All right. And then the banjo comes wrapped up. So, so it's kind of... So let, let's tear this, tear this stuff off. It's usually like... Most of the time, there's just little rubber bands to hold this packing material, wrapping material on here. And so we're going to get all of this off. It's like a, it's kind of like a big bag. Uh-oh. So there's, there's that. Get rid of that. And now... What you're seeing here is pretty common. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of instruments you'll get, especially 
imported or whatever, they will have this piece of brown paper around the strings, whether you get a guitar or a banjo or whatever. So, I don't know what that's there for, so uh, I guess it keeps the strings shiny. I, I don't know. And let's see. This one also has some tape right around the right around the thumb screws, I guess, maybe so that they don't get loose and fall out, because that does happen from time to time. So you can see the little tape. And they've got those taped down, so you can just pull all of that off, discard that. It's it's you know, it's not even worth going in a scrapbook. <laughs> and then you're gonna see that you see the bridge, the bridge is laying down. So now we've got to figure out what we're gonna do next. But what I like to do when I get one is I like to look it over, make sure everything's okay. So a lot of times when something gets shipped, there will be, you know, if it gets dropped or something, there can be damage. So I always go around the edge of the resonator and I look to see if there's any cracks, anything unusual, and I don't see anything unusual on this, this one. I also look at the, at the side of the neck, right in this area, and see if I see any cracks or anything or any damage, anything that's obvious. And on this one, I do not. It was packed well. The box that it came in was not beat up. So everything looks pretty good. Now what we need to do is we need to get in a little different position so you can see what I'm doing maybe or I may just stay here in the floor we need to we need to set up our bridge stand it up tune it up and 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 just check what we've got make sure that everything is good so I'll be right back if you get a chance please hit the subscribe button be sure to like this video leave a comment I appreciate it thanks all right, we're still down here on the floor. I'm gonna show you how to stand your bridge up. When you get your banjo, you get it all unwrapped, you're gonna, you're gonna find that the bridge is still, it's laying down. You may have to loosen these strings. That one sounds a little tight, so just loosen it, just, and just stand that bridge up. All you're gonna do, I'm gonna lay it back down, you're just gonna stand it up. I like to use two hands, but I did it with one so you could see. Put the strings in the slots. Just slide them over there. Make sure everything's straight. It's low. Odd, but there we go. Just make sure that the strings are straight on the fingerboard. And so everything looks, looks good. Now, I don't know if that bridge is in the right spot or not. So we're going to measure to make sure that it's right. The measurement we're going to use is this. I just, I just get the cheap tape, tape measure. And I like to measure from the nut to the 12th fret. And I am looking at from the nut to the 12th fret, just in the ballpark of 13 and 1 8 inch. I'm measuring Imperial, folks. So if it's 13 and an eighth to the 12th fret from the nut, then I want to measure from the 12th fret to the bridge 13 and 1 8. So let's do that. So this over here and make sure that we can go so from the from there to 13 and 1 8 so I'm a little further than that so I need to move my bridge forward and you can just slide it and so let's measure that again 13 I'm about 13 and a quarter so maybe a little, a little more and then we are at Oh, I went a little too far. So it was 13, 
So move it back, maybe 13 eighth. And, and all we want to do here is just get it in the ballpark. And that that's kind of, I'm kind of in the ballpark here. So that's all we need to do. Now, now we need to, now we need to tune up. So go grab your electronic tuner if you've got one. If you don't have one, you can get a tuner for your phone and we'll use that to tune up. So let me go grab my tuner. I'll be right back. So, you, so you'll need electronic tuner. Any, any of them will, will do. Uh, I, I don't have a preference. They all pretty much do the same thing. And, and it's a banjo. So uh, we're just going to tune up and, and get it close. It, because we're going to be moving some stuff around. So here, I'll push this down and you can watch me tune up. Uh... So now we've tuned up, but we want to make sure that this bridge is in exactly the right spot that we want. Uh, there's a number of ways you can do that. I, I normally do it by, by ear, uh, but you can use your tuner as well. But once we've got it tuned up, let's look at it again and, and make sure that the strings and the bridge are all in a straight line. I'll, I'll look down the neck and, and just make sure everything is straight. Uh, and when I say straight, I'm not looking for wood that's bent or anything. I, I'm looking f just to make sure that the strings are where they ought to be, you know, with the bridge. And, and everything looks, looks pretty close. And, cause when, and when you move the bridge and stuff, then, you know, your tuning's going to go out. So leave your tuner on there. And, but let me show you what I like to do. So I like to I like to make sure my D note is in tune. That's my first string. And then I will fret it at the 12th fret and I'll look at my tuner and see whether or not that's ringing a D. So, so it's pretty close. Let me and I'll explain that in just a second. You can also use your harmonic so if your fretted note, here, let me make it really drastic for you. If your fretted, if, if your open note is ringing a D and then your fretted note at the 12th fret is sharp. Here, let me see if I can show you my tuner. So we'll put the tuner here where you can see it. So my fretted note, my fretted note is in tune or my open note is in tune. Sorry about that. Open note is in tune, but when I fret it, you see it's sharp. So that means my bridge is too far forward. So I need to push my bridge back a little bit. And now let's play our open note. Okay, it's almost in tune. Now it's in tune, and if I fret it, it's still a little sharp. So if it's sharp, we need to move it towards the tailpiece. Just, just a little. So let's tune that up again. All right, fret it. Now it's now it's in tune. You can make a chime at the twelfth fret and fret it at the twelfth fret, and those are the same note. You can do it for your other strings if you want to. But really, you want to get that first string, and I usually like to try to get my third string fairly close to in tune. So let's do that one. So let's get our third string in tune. All right. And then see what it looks like if I fret it at the 12th fret. So it's a little sharp. So we need to move it back just a little bit. We're gonna keep our 
first string position in the same spot it means we're going to have to angle our bridge just a little bit. Uh, third string in tune and fretted. Still a little sharp, which is fairly normal for a five string banjo, but it's really close. So we're going to we're going to use that bridge position. Now, once you get this set up, hold it in your lap and let's get it tuned up, okay? Let's double check. So let me turn this around so I can see it. So there's our D, our B. Uh, fourth string is a lot flat. There we go. And then and fifths in tune. And now we're tuned up in our, when we play our notes, we're in tune all the way up the neck. And that's what we're shooting for. That's how we set our bridge. I hope that was clear. I hope you understood that process. Uh, if the notes, if the bridge had been too far back we'd have had to slid it forward to make it play in tune if it's too far forward you have to slide it back just use your use your tuner move the bridge and you and you'll figure it out that's how i do that now we're in tune uh so what do we do next jim well a lot of things there there's there's a number of things that we can check and one of the first things that I check is I check my tailpiece. And this one came in just absolutely perfect. Uh, it's set, it, this is a Presto tailpiece. And it is set almost an eighth of an inch away from the tension hoop. That's a really good place. And it's, it's a good place to start, and you can experiment with that, but that's generally where I set it. Uh, it, it's, it just gives you a little more ring, uh, and that's, that's fine. You notice the bridge, is, the bridge is at an angle, but that's okay. Your banjo may need the bridge set at an angle. You may set yours absolutely straight. It's fine either way. What works for you is, is you know, in your banjo is what's going to work. Don't, you know, don't worry. that That's fine. And, and that's quite normal. And a different set of strings, a different gauge string might behave differently. So keep that in mind. But once you get your bridge set, and I do this, I like to take a pencil and I like to mark where that, I like to mark where the bridge sits, just a couple little spots. And that way, if I have to take the bridge off for any reason, then I kind of know where to put it back. And so there's that. Now, what else do I need to check? And there's a variety of things that you can check. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get some picks. Okay, I put my picks on just to see what the banjo sounds like. <laughs> things that you'll want to look at is the neck relief so let me show you that so when you've got your banjo let's see tilt this down a little bit maybe you can see this is, this is a little harder to demonstrate but I like to fret at the first fret and fret down here at the bottom and I can reach with my thumb and just see if there's any 
space between the seventh fret and the string and there's just a little and that's all i'm looking for if that's a lot if there's a lot of space there then you're going to need to do a truss rod adjustment um, and but we're not going to have to do this on this recording king uh, and i'll be honest with you on the recording king banjos that i've got in the past I've never had to do that. Those They always seem to come set up just like they ought to be. And so that's, so that's just perfect. Had that been, let's say there'd been a lot of space, then you, you got the little truss rod cover. So this one has three screws, but you, you take those screws out and there's a, there's a place for a wrench. And usually your banjo will come with a wrench that you need to adjust that. So if there's too much bow, I mean, and when I say too much, it'll be obvious. Uh, I, I like to look for like about a business card or a little more, no more than 25 thousandths though. And then you will tighten it and that'll take some of the bow out. And you can, and when, when I say tighten it, I mean an eighth of a turn. Turn it at eighth, give the banjo time to adjust and see what happens, then check it again, do it slow. Don't make big, huge adjustments. If when you fret at both spots and there is no space, if the string is touching, then you can loosen it. Eighth of a turn, one eighth. Then check it, make sure, give the, give the banjo time to settle, tune it up, check it again. Don't make big adjustments to your truss rod, but it's there for your use. I mean, you'll see a lot of folks on the internet say, oh, don't touch that. Well, it's there for you to use and, and you can make minor adjustments. Just don't go crazy with it. You're smart. I mean, watching my channel. <laughs> so that's, that's that. And then the next thing we want to talk about is this head tension. Do we want to tighten this head? I kind of want to tighten the head. The banjo, when I hit the notes, it sounds really, really hollow to me. Now, you may not can tell that over the channel, but in, in my ear, it's really hollow, and it's a little spongy when I press on it. It's not super tight. Now, you don't want it really tight, but this, I, I know on a lot of import instruments and a lot of beginner instruments, you'll need to make a head adjustment. I, I tell you, I can't tell you the number of times that when I teach classes, folks come in with their beginner instruments. We will spend an hour or so with everybody getting their heads tensioned up tighter to make it sound good. So let me show you, let me show you how to do this. So pretty simple. Remember, remember those screws that we had. So they're, they're right here. You can just you can just take those out. There's four of them on this banjo. Your banjo may not have thumb screws. It may just have a uh, Phillips head screw where, it, where the resonator attaches. You may not have a resonator. So if you do, I mean, just look at it. You'll see how the resonator comes off. It's usually just a few screws. And that's what those look like. And put those somewhere safe. And then that's the inside of your resonator. It's got the little lugs that the screws, this one moves, holds it on. And then the inside of your banjo looks a lot like that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I've, I've got a little tool here. It's just a, it's just a wrench. And most banjos are gonna have a quarter inch lug and you can use a quarter inch wrench. Your banjo may have came with a tuning or a bracket wrench and whatever. Just find a socket that'll fit. I like this one because it's kind of a T-handle and I can sort of see how far I'm going. I'm going to tighten this thing about a quarter of a turn I'm, and I'm going to start at one side and I'm gonna work my way around. Now you will see folks say, hey, you know, you need to tighten that like you tighten a lug on a car. You need to do a star pattern. And I reckon you could do that. 
I've never, I've never done that. Uh, so if you do, if you do yours that way, that's cool. Uh, and if that makes you happy, I, I think you'll be fine. But all we're doing is just trying to get an even tension all the way around. And I'm going a quarter of a turn. That one a little more. That one was loose. And that's another reason to go over these. Occasionally, you're going to find find them that's loose. Now, I've come to this spot. This next nut, don't tighten that one. That one is attached to your tailpiece. We'll deal with that later. So skip that one. Just being careful to go about a quarter of a turn. Now, you don't have to. This isn't rocket surgery here, folks. You don't have to be exact. But it's good to be pretty close. And I've done this for so many years. Part of it is just, you know, by the seat of my pants. And the other part is just, you know, trying to pay attention to what I'm doing. You know, be sure I'm going a quarter of a turn. And, and my wrist, you know, when I, when I turn these, it, that's, about, that's about a quarter of a turn. So that's pretty handy. So now I've tightened all of those up. Uh, I'm going to look at my tailpiece, make sure I don't need to adjust anything there. And it's still good. It's still good. All right. So now we've tightened the head. If, all right, so let's slide you back up here where I can look at you. Uh, now, We'll put our, we're going to put our resonator back on in just a second. But I wanted to talk to you about this coordinator rod. Your neck is basically attached to the rim of the banjo. There's a couple of, you'll see this bolt right here. Yeah, there's a bolt and then there's a nut. And that hold, that's holding your neck on. The same one here. This rod, you can adjust the height of your strings. I don't like to mess with this a whole lot. But basic premise is, leave this one alone. But, I'm going to cat. Uh, <laughs> if, if your string action is really high, then you can, you can loosen this nut and tighten this one right there. So you can loosen that one just a little, just a little. And then you can tighten this one just a little. Not a lot. Don't go crazy. Don't make don't make big adjustments. So you're gonna, and that way you can lower your action. If your action was too low, then you're going to loosen this one and tighten this one. I know, clear as mud, right? Hey, P, what you doing, brother? All right. So let's put our resonator back on. Just gonna reverse the process. Nothing special here. And make sure everything fits. There we go. I put my screws in a safe place on the other side of me. And you just put them in a couple at a time, usually. All right. And we're pretty close to having this thing ready for prime time. Uh, go out and play us a job somewhere, if we could. Now, I'm interested to see what this is going to sound like once I get my resonator back on. It should be a little brighter. It's not quite as ringy when I'm talking. So let's try it out and see what it sounds like. I'm back. Yeah, much better. Much better. And all we did was a quarter of a turn, and that may be all you need. All right, so there you go. That's the basic 
process that I use when setting up a new banjo for a student and, and getting everything kind of lined up. The action's good. I generally like my action to be about an eighth of an inch off the 12th fret, and that's about where that looks to be. And everything else is in pretty good, pretty good shape. So this is the, uh, this is a uh, Recording King Dirty 30s model. Uh, it's a great banjo for the buck. I tell all my students that, you know, so what, what do I need to start out with? This is a good one. If you're going to learn to play bluegrass, this is the one to grab. So, hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I've got, I've got a cat outside that's scratching on the window, wanting in. Go figure. Hobbs, you probably can't see him through my beard. You see him scratching? Yeah. All right. <laughs>